How's everyone doing? Uh, thanks for joining me on my uh, small engine repair channel. Today's video, we're going to talk about the uh, auger system on your uh, single stage uh, snow blower. Alright guys, thanks uh, again for joining me. Uh, for anyone who's new to my channel, uh, I do some small engine repairs out of my garage. And uh, I post videos, how-to videos, uh, on a weekly basis. Uh, just to try and help people uh, save a little bit of money, save, save some uh, high repair bills. And in today's project, we're going to talk about the uh, auger system on these single stage snow blowers. Now, uh, if you've ever noticed that uh, you take your machine outside, you bring it out there, you're trying to um, blow the snow off, and it just doesn't seem to be blowing very far, uh, or it's not blowing at all. Maybe you uh, notice that your uh, auger system is not even rotating at all. Or maybe it's rotating, just rotating very slowly. The first thing I would want you guys to do is check the, uh, the belt, um, the drive system for the auger. I do have a video on how I uh, show you how to inspect the uh, belts. It's usually pretty easy. Just take off the side cover and uh, you have access to your drive belt. Now, if it's not throwing snow at all, there's a good chance that maybe your belt is actually broken. Um, so you open up the cover and you find that your belt is busted. So uh, once again in the last video I show you how to uh, take the belt off and to replace it and put a new one on. Uh, but let's say that the belt is not broken and it's throwing snow but it's just not throwing snow very far. There's a possibility that the tension of the belt is not set correctly. Uh, and that's possible because uh, you know over time these belts stretch and um, you know, it doesn't mean the belt is no good anymore. It just means that we have to adjust the tension that's on the belt so that we're applying the proper amount of uh, driving force to our auger pulley. Now, as we all know who own these machines, to engage the auger, what we need to do is we need to pull back on this handle up here up top. Now, that handle has a little cable attached to it and it comes down in this particular model comes down and in behind this panel and actually moves this tensioner okay so if I pull up top you can see I'm applying some pressure to the belt through that tensioner now sometimes when you do that either due to some stretching of the cable over time or stretching of the belt when you engage that it's not engaging it enough to actually drive your auger pulley um, to the proper speed and thus your auger is not spinning as fast as it should be and your snow is just kind of you know not getting thrown out like it normally was before so on all these machines, these three different machines, they each have their own different system and way that we can adjust the tension on the cable uh, and subsequently on the belt. Okay, so I'll go through each one of these. This one happens to be a Toro. This is a uh, two-stroke machine. All right, uh, but they're all, you know, slightly different. So on this particular Toro, where we need to look is at this cable, you can see that there's a, a bit of a plastic sheath. And over top, if I slide that up, let me just put you down for a second. When I slide that up, it's gonna expose a system whereby we can adjust the tension uh, for this pulley, uh, for the idler, I'm uh, sorry, for the uh, tensioner, and subsequently the belt tension. Okay, now 
how do I know, first of all, that I don't have enough uh, tension, okay? So if I pull on the handle up top here and I engage the, uh, the tensioner, if I, when I go ahead and take a, put some pressure on this belt, you can see that this belt moves quite a bit, okay? So is there a secret formula that says if it moves X amount, you have to replace or adjust the tension? No, all right? To me, this has probably about two inches of play with some just moderate pressure put on that belt. So to me, that's just a little bit too much for my liking, okay? So if I come up and I take a look at how this system works, you got a cable that runs into this plate that has a bunch of holes in it, okay? And as you can see right now, the Z-bend of the end of my cable from up top is only basically on the third one um, from the, the, the least amount of tension that I can put on this cable. Okay, so to adjust the tension on this thing, you're just going to go ahead and pull back. You apply a little bit of pressure here, okay, and then release the tension on this cable and pull out your Z bend. Okay, now the, another way you can do it so you're not having to hold this is just disconnect this end of this plate. So now I have as much uh, slack on this cable as I want. And like I said, it was on this third hole right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it down maybe two more holes. Okay, one, two. All right. So the other thing I can do is uh, just pull this a uh, little bit of tension on this uh, spring and pull this plate off, okay? All right, so now if you remember at the beginning of the video, I had the Z-bend coming out of the third hole, one, two, three, or the second hole from the top here. So what I'm gonna do is actually move it down maybe two more holes Okay, by giving me some slack. So I'm gonna give myself some slack on this cable and I'm gonna put the Z-bend in two holes further up, or further down, I guess. However it is you're looking at it. I'm gonna put that guy back on. Okay, so now all I do, hook up my spring. To the end of the plate okay so now when I go ahead and engage my handle I'm going to be applying a little bit more tension to this this uh, tensioner here and as you can see same amount of pressure I'm only getting maybe about an inch worth of play here and that's where, about where I want it, an inch or maybe even a little. You don't want it to be too, too tight because you want, you, you don't want to have this being engaged all the time uh, because what's going to happen is if I make it too tight without even depressing the handle, there's going to be some tension on this, this pulley, which is then going to drive, going to be driving the auger pulley all the time without me even pulling the handle. So that would be too, too tight. That would be too tight. That's why I say maybe about an inch worth of tension would be about about right for me. And then that's it. You just put your, your uh, sort of rubber boot back on there as far down as it will go. And one last test. There you go. Now if you wanted to briefly uh, test this without putting back the panel uh, just to see if your uh, blower is now blowing snow normally.
then uh, you could go ahead and do that, but I wouldn't leave the panel off for too, too long, okay? Then you just go ahead and put your panel back on and you're done. So the next machine we'll take a look at here is this Craftsman. Slightly different setup on this guy, um, but not very much different, okay? Same thing, handle, okay? Puts tension on the cable, pulls that tensioner, and engages the drive for the auger, okay? Now, once again, I'm going to engage, put the tension on the belt, and as you can see, same amount of pressure as before, just moderate pressure, that tension actually looks really good. Okay, so I don't need to adjust this one, but if I did need to adjust it, it's a slightly different system. We got a boot here, which exposes, well, I don't know what you want to call that, like a, kind of looks like a, uh, what do you call those, a light tree for uh, drag racing. Um, so it would be the same sort of thing, guys. You can see there's a cable here and a Z bend on the end of that cable. You're gonna just adjust it into a slightly different hole, whether you need a little bit more or a little bit less tension on your belt, okay? So that's this guy, that's this uh, Craftsman. And then the last one is this uh, MTD, or it's Bolin's made by MTD. Um, but once again, the, the system works, the drive, or the uh, auger system works this, pretty much the same way with this tensioner and the handle up here. You pull up your handle, and it provides some tension on your belt. Okay, so same thing. Put some tension on there. Now this one's just a, probably a little bit loose, but not too bad. It's probably right at the max about one inch of movement, that's kind of where I like to be at. But this one, it doesn't have, so here's our cable that comes down from the handle. It doesn't have an adjustment down here. If I follow the cable up all the way up the side of the handle here, you can see it kind of looks more like a lawnmower cable. Uh, and that's pretty much, that's exactly what it's like. Now. Uh, whoever had this machine before me, you can kind of see, looks like they broke off the Z-bend on the end of this and they fixed it by just using a hose clamp. Now, what you would do in this particular one, as you can see on the handle, we've got one, two, three holes for that Z-bend to possibly go in. So, if I wanted to put more tension on this cable and subsequently on my belt, I just move it up to the next highest hole. And that'll basically put more tension on the cable and the belt. If that doesn't work, I can move it up one more. If that doesn't work, then I either have to consider changing the belt because it's just too stretched or I'd have to change the cable. Okay, so I would try the belt first um, and then I would maybe go with the belt or the uh, cable second. Okay, so there you have it guys. That's just uh, three machines. That's, you know, three different types of systems where you can adjust the tension on your belt. Hopefully that helps you guys. Uh, if it does, please go ahead and uh, smash the like button. That really helps me out. And uh, if you want to subscribe to the channel and get more content, uh, go ahead please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and that way you'll be notified each and every week when I post a new video. So uh, thanks for joining me again in the garage today guys. Hopefully it was informative and uh, until the next project, take care.